Today's topic of conversation is the top five F1 2017 Grand Prix. Here we go then. Here's the big five that you've all been waiting for. Now, I'm sure you can have a few guesses of your own of what the top five races are going to be. So before we begin, why don't you just chuck them in the comments section? Why not? Have a bash. You might get them all right. But you've got three, two, one. Let's get into it. So, number five on my list is the USA Grand Prix. I really enjoyed this race. Uh, I think it's the best USA Grand Prix to date. We had that incredible, well, debatable, incredible opening sequence from the man, the myth, the legend, Michael Buffer, introducing all the drivers onto the circuit. We then had Usain Bolt waving the checkered flag out for the formation lap. Very American, very over the top, but I did like it. Something new, something a bit different. Hamilton was on pole, but into turn one up the hill was passed by Sebastian Vettel. Championship hopes did see him a bit lost at that stage, so he really needed to get the win in this race. However, it did not happen. A few laps later, Hamilton got back in front of the German. A great little move there from Hamilton, actually. Um, we also had Ricardo and Valtteri Bottas getting in a fatty scrap themselves through turns one and two. Bottas actually had a lot of scrapping to do in the Grand Prix. We had Magnussen hitting both Salbers. Um, not impressed I wasn't with Kevin Magnussen this season, and this race was a real epitome of that. Went straight into the side of Pascal Verlein and later on made contact with Ericsson. The fact he's battling with Salbers is a joke in the first place. So. Yeah, not a good race from Magnussen, but it did make interesting TV. And then, of course, we had that comeback from Max Verstappen, starting low down in the field. I think it was, I want to say it was 16th, but that was China. It might be 9th. I should have, I should have researched this. However, he was far back in the field. He then made his way up to third position with pretty much two corners to go by passing Kimi Raikkonen on the inside but after the race the FIA deemed it was an illegal overtake and gave him a five second penalty meaning Raikkonen ended up in third place but it was a great move from uh, Max Verstappen and actually before we move on to number four I think the best move of the season was done in this race I really do and it was by Carlos Sainz around the outside Sergio Perez nonetheless in the Force India arguably a better car over the season so that is why the USA Grand Prix is number five. Number four then pretty good race once again I may be being a slight bit biased with this pick but it was Silverstone so yes we had a Hamilton domination which was great if you're a British fan uh, I say bias because Yes, I'm British, but also I went to this race this season. You'll have a few clips in the background uh, that I took from when I was there, sat in the Beckett stand. A great race to be part of, to witness, as Bottas made his way up through the field after having a penalty, a gearbox penalty, I believe it was. Ricardo as well, he was fighting his way through the field after going wide, um, just in the start of the second sector, got forced onto the grass by Roman Grosjean, I believe it was. We had that great crash through Beckett by Danny Kvyat and Carlos Sainz. That was great to witness. Palmer did not finish. Didn't even start the race to Jolin Palmer on the formation lap. His Renault broke down. The big drama, though, came in the closing stages with Bottas and Verstappen trying to get onto that podium. And with literally maybe five laps to go, Raikkonen's tyre burst. And you're thinking, oh, wow. I mean, Kimi, this, this was probably Kimi's best race of the season, apart from Monaco. It really was much quicker than Sebastian um, the whole entire race. And was the only one who was, well, I was going to say the only one in touching distance of Hamilton, but really no one was, were they? Let's be quite honest. But he was the closest one, was Raikkonen, and I was very impressed with that. But his tyre exploded, he had to come in, and then Vettel's tyre exploded as well. It was, it was pretty insane, to be fair. Um, I think the whole part of going to a Grand Prix makes it that little bit more special. So that's why it's number four in my list. 
Moving on to the podium then, number three, the third place trophy goes to the Mexican Grand Prix. I think this was definitely the best Mexican Grand Prix since its return in 2015, I believe it was. Um, Lewis Hamilton took his fourth world championship, but that first lap incident between Verstappen, Vettel and Hamilton involving Vettel moving Losing about half, well not half his front wings, his end plate, um, but more importantly, Hamilton losing his rear wheel to a puncher. Both of them, the world championship contenders, had to come in on lap one, and we were treated to just a flurry of overtakes from both of them down that long first straight. It's a track I'm not a huge fan of, but seeing those two claw their way Back through the field, we saw that great scrap between Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso. Probably the best scrap of the season, I would say. Um, off the top of my head right now, I really did enjoy that big scrap. And yeah, just amazing to see both of them do that. Lewis Hamilton was crowned the world champion, so that's always going to boost the race up by a few points. And Max Verstappen won the race. I think it was great seeing Red Bulls win this season and... It was great to see more than two teams winning the Grand Prix. First time in the hybrid era that we've had more than two teams win in a season, which, um, yeah, not the best, is it? But hey-ho, we'll take it. Hopefully next season, maybe we can push it to four. Who knows? Who knows? Right. There's only two left that it could be. I'm sure you all know. This is like the worst races, same scenario. I'm sure you all know what's one and two, but it's just depending on what order I've done it. And I think I've done it in the obvious order, to be honest. Number two is the Singapore Grand Prix. That first corner carnage, unbelievable. Probably the moment of the season, just thinking about it now. Woo! Cheeky, cheeky, very spicy. Big smash from the two Ferraris and Verstappen Alonso as well. Nearly got around the outside but didn't quite get it done. Smashy was out as well into turn one. You're watching it in absolute amazement. The first wet Grand Prix of all time. Wet night race. Not wet Grand Prix, correcting myself there. <laughs> but of all time. And you're just watching it. Oh, it was oh, it's very cheeky. You can tell I'm buzzing. I did love that Grand Prix. Uh, well, anyway. Then Vettel, the camera cuts to Vettel, and he spun. He's but on his own brake fluid, or whatever it was, coming out the back of his car, he's out of the race. He's missing his front wing as well now. Madness. And Hamilton, after an awful weekend, is leading the Grand Prix. Hamilton is leading the Grand Prix. We were treated to a great race. Pretty much the contenders for the race were Hamilton and Verstappen. But we saw the likes of Carlos Sainz fighting for a podium. Nico Hülkenberg, Julian Palmer was even up there. Julian Palmer passed Bottas. I mean, Palmer, yeah, he was awful the whole season, but this race, pretty good from Julian. Very impressed. We had Van Dorn doing in perhaps his best race for McLaren of the season, getting a P7, which is very respectable in that car, but that is a track which does favour them, well, not even favour the McLaren, but the McLaren prefers. And Alonso was looking to do a better job than Stoffel, but still impressive job from the Belgian, so I'm not going to slate into him. But really, for that first corner incident, and just the mixture of names that are fighting for that podium, that's why it gets P2 in this list. And P1, we all know what this is, it's Baku. Like everyone keeps saying, well done Baku. Daniel Ricciardo, his only win of the season, but of all the races to take it, you'd, you'd have picked Baku, wouldn't you? Obviously, first pretty much two turns, we had contact and carnage and mayhem going on. Several safety cars. I mean, the Baku officials and the FIA at that weekend were just chucking out safety cars left, right and centre. We had a red flag. And, of course, after the Kvyat incident, well, not even incident, Kvyat just parked up on the side of the road. Hamilton, maybe, well, he wasn't, but Vettel thought he was uh, 
Doing a bit of cheeky break testing. So Vettel pulls alongside, gives him a little whack. Wasn't too happy about that was old uh, Vettel. And if he hadn't have done that, he probably would have won the Grand Prix because Hamilton's headrest decided it wasn't happy, sat where it was and wanted to just leave and get involved with the fans. So Hamilton had to go in and get his headrest sorted out, put back in its place. Vettel got given a penalty. Felipe Massa, love that man sometimes, I really do, was on for a win. I really think Massa could have won that Grand Prix if his car hadn't exploded on him. With that Mercedes engine down that straight, obviously Stroll got his first podium. I completely forgot about that then. Stroll got his first podium, but Massa could have won that race and Williams could have had a double podium. Would have been even more special, but we'll take it that Ricardo won that race. Hulkenberg as well could have got his first podium, but just turned it a bit too early. Bang, wheels gone. See you later, Hulkenberg. So, great race. It really was. The, oh, I forgot the two Force Indias as well. First of their real big, big incidents. Smashing into each other once again. Put Perez out the race pretty much. I do think Ocon squeezed him in that particular incident. Perez most of the year I was not impressed with his attitude or his driving but I do think in that incident Ocon did squeeze him so Baku well done you are number one on the top five F1 2017 races in the description I'll have the link to every single one of the top five so you can go watch the highlights over on the F1 channel that is the top five F1 2017 races. My 2018 predictions will be coming out very, very soon. I want to get it done before everyone else. I want to do it before the cars have even been announced. Let's see if we can get it right. Let's see how many of the 10 teams we can get in their correct position and how many of the 20 drivers we can get in their correct position. I don't know. Will we see a new world champion? You'll have to find out in the next video, but guys, Remember to like, subscribe, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.